Hey everybody, one that always bored, never boring. The other day I posted a video on dice combat systems that I really enjoy. And I thought I would do another video talking about a game mechanism that I really enjoy. And that's character creation and by extension of that team creation. I think the first game I ever owned that allowed for character creation was Advanced Hero Quest, and that was a very, very simple creation system where you rolled some dice for your stats, and then you could choose your starting items. And as basic as that was, I had hours of fun creating different characters and different backstories for those characters. And I would say that's one of the reasons I really enjoy Rangers of Shadow Deep, but also what I really like about Rangers of Shadow Deep, and something which doesn't turn up as often, I don't think, in games, is you get to build an entire team. You get to build your dirty dozen. One of my favorite things in movies and books is when there is a team of heroes who band together to overcome something. And Rangers of Shadow Deep gives you the opportunity to create that sort of team. But we're not going to talk about Rangers of Shadow Deep today. We're talking about another game, a game that I grew up with and a game that I love dearly, a game that I have featured on the channel before and will be featuring again. And that is Space Crusade. Space Crusade has a really simple but really effective way of customizing your team of Space Marines for your adventures and we're going to talk about that today. And if you don't know what Space Crusade is or Star Quest as it was known in some territories, you might want to check out some of the playthrough videos on my channel. So in Space Crusade, one player will take on the role of the aliens and that's like a dungeon master role. And then up to three players will take on the role of groups of Space Marines. There are Blood Angels, Imperial Fists and Ultramarines, they are colour coded and each squad comprises a commander, which is this chap here, and then four regular marines. And regardless of which group of marines you take, everybody has access to the same type of weapons. There are three different weapon options for the commander. He can focus on melee and take a power sword and a power fist or power glove. He can focus on ranged combat and take a heavy bolter, or he can sit somewhere in the middle and take a power axe and bolt pistol combo, which gives him a little of both worlds. When it comes to the regular marines, you have to have at least one who takes a heavy weapon, but the rest can be armed as you wish. The basic weapon is the bolter. If you give a marine a bolter, they get a little boost to their speed, but their combat effectiveness is drastically reduced compared to the heavy weapon models. One can take an assault cannon, which is a weapon which is very good for clearing out masses of low strength enemies. One can take a plasma gun, which is a very good weapon for fighting in corridors because it will blast through rows of enemies. And one can take a missile launcher, which is a really powerful weapon for taking out groups of enemies that are all packed together. And you may have noticed that my marines are all magnetized for easily swapping out the weapons. I have got a video on my channel where I show how I achieved that. But the choice of weapons for your marines is only the start of how you customize your forces. At the start of every mission, the Space Marine players get to pick a number of orders and a number of equipment cards to help specialize their forces. And it's through these cards that the designer managed to bring out the character of those different Space Marine chapters in a way that you may not necessarily expect for such a mainstream, easily accessible family game. Each chapter has access to four orders and eight pieces of equipment. And here we have the order cards for the Blood Angels. The Blood Angels specialize in movement and close combat, and all of their cards help to bring out that element of their nature. One of the orders they have access to is Fire, which will allow each of your Marine miniatures to fire twice in a turn. But the other three orders focus on getting into position and performing close combat attacks. You have Move It, which allows each of the Marine miniatures to move twice in a turn. You have Photon Grenades, and when you play that card, any alien miniatures you attack in hand-to-hand -hand combat will roll one less dice than normal. And then you have the Close Assault card, which is specifically for Marines that are armed with regular bolters rather than heavy weapons. Every Marine with a bolter may fire and attack in hand-to-hand -hand combat in the same turn. Here we have the eight Blood Angels equipment cards. The composition for how the equipment cards are laid out is always the same between the chapters. There are always two items that are specifically for the commander of the squad, and then there are six items that are for buffing the regular Marines. 
In the case of the Blood Angels, the two items that are specifically for the Commander are both cards that will improve close combat effectiveness. The first item is a Force Field for the Commander that increases the Commander's armor value from 2 to 3. This makes the Commander much more resilient, much more capable of weathering a storm of enemy fire as he moves into a close combat position to retaliate. His second equipment choice is the Bionic Arm which allows him to re-roll one of his dice every time he attacks in close combat, dramatically improving his chances of winning. And you can see that both of those cards benefit a playstyle that favours close combat, and that is why when you are selecting your weapon options for your Blood Angels Commander, you're probably better off taking the Power Glove Power Sword combo. That's going to maximise the amount of damage he can put out in close combat when used in conjunction with the Bionic Arm, and you don't have to worry so much about the fact that he doesn't have a ranged attack because he can advance forward, weathering enemy fire with his force field. The next two items are for the Marines themselves, and they are both for Marines that favour taking bolters rather than heavy weapons. The first are close assault blades that will allow the marines to attack diagonally in hand-to-hand -hand combat and when attacking in that manner opponents will roll one less dice. The second item is a bolt pistol and it gives any of your marines armed with bolters one extra white dice to roll in close combat. So those are two cards that are specifically for marines armed with bolters and that will encourage you to equip more bolters in your squad than you might if you were taking the imperial fists for example. Next up, you have two different types of grenades. You have blind grenades, which you can employ on your turn, and then no adversaries on the board can attack your marines that turn. And then you have the melter bomb that allows one of your marines to roll two extra heavy dice in close combat, which can really help to take down things like androids and dreadnoughts. The final two items are targeters, and these are available to all of the squads. They allow a specific weapon type, to re-roll one dice after firing. For example, you can choose to equip a heavy weapon with a targeter, in which case only the marine with that particular heavy weapon will get the re-roll, or you can equip most of your marines with bolters, put a targeter on the bolters, and then all of your marines with bolters will get re-rolls. Next up, we have the Imperial Fists, and in direct contrast to the Blood Angels, the Imperial Fists are all about heavy weapons and technology. So a lot of the cards they have access to are designed around improving the effectiveness of heavy weapons and also combating some of the shortcomings of heavy weapons, like the fact they slow down your movement. Here we have our four Commander Order cards. As with the Blood Angels, the Imperial Fists have access to the Fire and Move It orders, but they also have two new orders. They have Bisections, which states that each of your Marine Miniatures may either move twice or fire twice, which gives them the flexibility to adapt to the current situation, either moving into better positions or laying down some serious firepower with their heavy weapons. The final order is the Heavy Weapon order, which allows one of your miniatures with a heavy weapon to move twice and fire twice. And this can be particularly deadly. Looking at the Imperial Fist's equipment cards, most of them are the same as those that are available to the Blood Angels. Again, we have two targeters, and then we have blind grenades, melter bombs, and bolt pistols again. But we get two new options for our commander, and we also get suspensors for our heavy weapons. The Bionic Eye is similar to the Bionic Arm, but rather than giving a re-roll on close combat attacks, it gives a re-roll on ranged attacks. The second commander card is the Combi Weapon, and this can only be used if your commander takes a heavy bolter. And then on your turn, when you activate your commander, you can choose to either fire the heavy bolter as a heavy bolter, or you can use it as a plasma gun instead. And that means if you equip your squad with the maximum number of heavy weapons, that's one missile launcher, one plasma gun, and one assault cannon, you also get a fourth heavy weapon, your commander has an additional plasma gun. With four out of five of your models armed with a heavy weapon, you can put out some seriously devastating firepower. Of course, if you load up your marines with heavy weapons, they're all going to be much slower, and that's why the Imperial Fists have access to suspensors. If you have this card, all of your marines with heavy weapons will move as though they only have bolters. That does away with one of the major downsides of taking heavy weapons. The other downside to having heavy weapons is it means each of your marines is holding a unique weapon, and that can reduce the effectiveness of items such as the targeters, because, because if you have three marines with bolters and you give the targeter to your bolters, then three marines will benefit from that targeter. 
But if all of your marines have different weapons, no matter which weapon you apply the targeter to, you are only improving the combat effectiveness of a single marine. However, I think that's an acceptable cost for having so much firepower in your team. And you should have been able to identify that this set of cards means that a good way to play the Imperial Fist is to take every heavy weapon option you have available and to equip your commander with a heavy bolter. That will enable you to make the most effective use of the Bionic Eye, the Combi Weapon and the Suspensors. Finally, you have the Ultramarines and the Ultramarines are all about flexibility. They can do a little bit of what the Blood Angels can do, they can do a little bit of what the Imperial Fists can do, but they can't do either as well. And this is evidenced first and foremost by their selection of order cards. You can see they don't have any orders that are unique to them. They have Fire and Move It, which is also available to the Imperial Fists and the Blood Angels. And then they have Close Assault, which is also available to the Blood Angels, and Bisections, which is also available to the Imperial Fists. Looking at their equipment cards, again, many of them are things that are also available to Imperial Fists and Blood Angels. They have access to those two targeters, they also have the blind grenades and the melter bomb, and then they have the bolt pistols. They have access to one unique item for their marines, which is the bio scanner, and then their commander has two unique items in the form of the medikit and the digital weapons. All of these cards work together to make the ultramarines as flexible as possible. You can focus on melee when you need to, you can focus on ranged combat when you need to. And the bio scanner is particularly interesting because it's the only item of its kind that allows you to get a drop on the alien player and better formulate your strategies. Because in Space Crusade, when enemies arrive on the board, they arrive in the form of blips. You don't know exactly what they are. Kind of like in the movie Aliens, where you just see the little blips on the motion trackers. But with the bio scanner, the Ultramarine player can take a look at three blip tokens anywhere on the board each turn. And that's going to gradually allow them to build up a better picture of the environment, of the enemies they are facing, and that really emphasizes the Ultramarine's focus on by the book's strategy and methodical implementation of the codes. The first of the unique commander items is the Medikit, which is a one-use item that allows you to completely restore your commander's hit points. This is incredibly powerful, but it does have a downside in that you have to choose when to use it. I made a very bad choice in a playthrough with the Ultramarines on my channel where I did not use the Medikit when I should have done and I paid the price. The last card is Digital Weapons and this is the really interesting card because it combines the benefit of the Bionic Arm with the benefit of the Bionic Eye. Effectively, the commander gets to re-roll one dice regardless of how he attacks. He gets a re-roll in close combat, he gets a re-roll with ranged combat. And this makes him incredibly flexible and also means that he benefits from taking the power axe and bolt pistol combo where he does have that balance of good close combat skills with some ranged firepower. However, it does mean he can be just as effective with the power glove power sword combo as the blood angel or just as effective as the imperial fist commander with the heavy bolter. Regardless of how you arm him, he's going to get the reroll. But it then comes down to the lack of the other equipment cards that makes him slightly less effective. If you give him the Power Glove and Power Sword, he will be able to put out the same amount of damage as the Blood Angel Commander, but he doesn't have access to a Force Field which is going to protect him while he is advancing into enemy fire. If you give him the Heavy Bolter, he will be just as effective as the Imperial Fist Commander with the Bionic Eye, but he doesn't have access to the Combi Weapon which means he can't use his Heavy Bolter as a Plasma Gun. So you get the ultimate flexibility in choosing the playstyle you prefer, but you just don't get to be quite as good as those who specialise in it. And I would say this does make the Ultramarines the hardest to play. They're obviously designed to take a mixture of the weapons that you feel comfortable using. I generally take two bolters, two heavy weapons, and give the commander the bolt pistol and power axe, which plays into that strategy of being able to do a little bit of everything. They are the jacks of all trades. But that's it, that is a probably far too in-depth look at the different ways that you can customize your Space Marine forces in Space Crusade, one of the games that I played endlessly as a child and which I only recently reacquired. I am planning to do some more playthroughs for Space Crusade on the channel when I get an opportunity to. And also at some point, I'm going to put some paint on these miniatures too and there will be videos for that. But that's it from me for now. I hope you found this interesting. If not, sorry, 
But if you have enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.